Hi, comic book fans, and welcome to another suddenlycomics.com video. And it's Monday, and it's the Promise Variants. And as usual, uh, Alan and I are going to be talking comics. And in the run-up to Halloween, Alan is forcing me to do monsters, monsters, <laughs> and monsters. So this week, uh, I'm doing, I'm doing ghosts and ghoulies. Um, and if you want to know the difference between a ghoul and a zombie, you need to go watch uh, the first part of this video. Uh, because Alan explains what the difference between a ghoul and a zombie is, which is essential world knowledge. Um, <laughs> and Alan is going to be doing uh, zombies and mummies, and uh, Alan had a lot more mummies uh, than than I did. So, um, mm. so uh, without further ado, Alan, can we can we see some of your uh, werewolves and mummies? So I figure, hey, um, you know, with um, all the stuff that's going on right now with Marvel. I should really probably show the most famous uh, werewolf from the Marvel collection, right? Yeah. So, uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, you know, like this is a kind of obvious one. So, um, and it all starts with Werewolf by Night number two, uh, or Marvel Spotlight number two, which is Werewolf, werewolf by Night's first appearance. Um, you know, and it's, I actually kind of like this cover. Um, even oh. though I'm not a big fan of panel covers, like where it's like a whole bunch of panels, I think this one works where it kind of tells that little story. Um, I, I really like that, especially um, for me, one of the big keys about uh, were, uh, werewolves in general is that transformation scene where they, where they, where they kind of go from that human into a werewolf. I think that's like, you know, that's the, that's what, it's almost like the the big thing that everyone looks forward to in a in a werewolf movie, you know. If you look at Werewolf by, uh, in London, that's a great movie. Uh, you know, American or Werewolf the, in London, brilliant. Yeah, American Werewolf in London. Yeah, that's it's my great favorite movie. werewolf movie. Great movie. The the scene where he changes and it's like it's all done like through stock. You know, uh, like uh, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, where they where they. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting the technique today. I'm like totally forgetting all my names. Um, uh, where they, where they, where they, you know, take a whole bunch of shots, and each shot is a little bit different. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So that way they can show the transformation, right? And then they speed it up and play it, right? Um, yeah, there was no CGI uh, back then. Yeah, no CGI, but it, it you know it worked really well. Actually, in some ways, it could be better. Yeah. I, I thought sometimes the CGI kind of looks very digital mm -hmm. and it doesn't look like, you know, having that kind of, you know, a bit more um, almost realistic. I don't know. It's not, I'm not sure if it's realistic, but um, <laughs> I, I, I liked, I like the older style. Um, you know, another good example is uh, where uh, of a werewolf transformation is um, in Michael Jackson's thriller. Yeah. Yeah. The, that, that, I had the original tape of that, you know, the VHS tape of uh, that, that, you know, 15 minute long uh, music video. So um, I love the transformation part. So uh, that's why I like this cover. Um, so that's Werewolf by Night's first appearance in Marvel Spotlight. And then we got his first series, which is number, you know, number one of his first series. And this is, you know, I think another really great one where he's kind of like, you know, doing the werewolf thing. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of cool. And um, then we got uh, his first team up. Oh yes, that's, is, that's, I like that. Cover. This is this is a big one. Uh, is, Legions yeah. of Monsters. Uh, this is Marvel Marvel Premiere number twenty eight, and this is a pretty hot book actually. Yeah. Um, in that, uh, this is actually my spec book. So you did your spec book on my channel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this would be my spec book for this show. You know, um, it's kind of an obvious one. Actually, all the ones so far that I mentioned are good specs because they're going to do a Christmas special yeah. with Werewolf by Night. Um, it's not using the Werewolf by Night in this one that I've shown, but it is uh, using the more modern Werewolf by Night where he's a Latino. Yeah. Um, but uh, another Werewolf by Night kind of major one that's not a spec anymore because everybody knows it uh is werewolf by night number 32 <laughs> yeah. 
So this is kind of that kind of, you know, it's been, it was actually specced on before there was even any talk of a TV series or anything. Like everybody loves Moon Knight. He's kind of like, you know, the fans of this character have kind of hyped this book for the longest time. It was hot in the nineties. I remember this book being like, Oh, this is the hot book you got to get. And like, it was even back then it was way overpriced. It was like very pricey book. Um, I'm, I was happy even with my low grade one. Um, so yeah, so um, this is kind of a great one because actually um, Moon Knight wears silver in it. Yeah. So it's, you know, kind of a great battle. So uh, Werewolf by Night number 32. So those would be my, uh, my little collection of uh, Werewolf by Night related books. I actually have a couple others that are good specs um, as well, but they're in my boxes and I'd have to dig for them. <laughs> so, but yeah, those are my werewolf, werewolf right. one. So I dread to think uh, what those would cost if I wanted to buy them. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm afraid. It's gone up a lot. <laughs> the train has left the station for me on those. Yeah, uh, pretty much. <laughs> so I'm going to show you some comics. Uh, probably all of these comics would, pro would probably buy, the, you know, half a page of one of those. Um, <laughs> so I showed some DC horror on uh, Alan's channel. Um, I've got some more DC horror. And this is a, uh, this is very, very very much in theme for ghosts and ghoulies because the comic is called Ghosts. Um, so I was thinking about bringing the series, that series last time from on my side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a great one. It's a nice cover, that one. Um, and, um, I said, I said, uh, you know, these cost me virtually, I think, you know, I, bought, I told you I bought a whole load of DC horror for about... 100 quid for loads of them um and there was quite a lot of this and these are not worth they're not worth very much but i do like some yeah. of the covers um but i think those ones are heating up a bit they're getting are they you know, people are going back yeah people are going back and saying oh you know the bronze age horror was kind of overlooked for a long time and people are kind of picking it up now yeah and this is a nice one um our boy is dead but his ghost is saving us you know <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, nice ghosty one there. Um, yeah. Another nice cut. I mean, the covers on these are pretty, pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, they, they have that. Um, there's a different style than the, the, the golden age horror, but yeah. they definitely have a, you know, pretty uh, horrific style as well. So, yeah. You know, I think they're pretty great. Uh, bullets cannot stop the monster ghost. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a nice one. Uh, next one. We, oh, we've got a character appearing here who um, is a mate of, uh, he appears, you know that in, in Alan's show, I showed, first, I showed the first Silver Age appearance of the Phantom Stranger and also appearing in that comic is also the first Silver Age appearance of the character called, character called Doctor 13. Um, okay. And Doctor Thirteen is appearing in this issue of Ghosts: The Art of Fine Haunting. Oh, nice! So, if you want to learn how to haunt, that's the book. Yeah, you, uh, last week you could, we showed you how to become a vampire, uh, a werewolf. A werewolf. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was trying it out; it didn't work. Didn't it work? I don't know what. No, it didn't work. Sorry. <laughs> which, which method did you try? Eating the wolf's brain? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the wolf's brain, and <laughs> it was awesome. Right, here we've got some a more children, a children's game of terrifying reality, seance in ward three. Oh, nice. I mean, you know, these are these are you'll you, these are all dollar bin comics. Mm. And um I've shown those already. Yeah, so that's my um that's my first uh, pick for my uh ghosts and ghoulies on this channel. It's the right. DC Ghosts. Nice. Nice. A great series. Great series. I actually, I picked up just like you did. Like I picked up a, a it was a short box of yeah. like, uh, like DC horror. Yeah. And you know, I got some, like I got some house of mystery mixed in yeah. and house of secrets mixed yeah. in. And I had like ghost number one. I think they gave me two oh. issues of it. Wow. Okay. It, so nice. yeah. Yeah. So there was a bunch of stuff. It was quite nice. It was a good collection. I, I paid $10 <laughs> way back in the day.
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> or a short box. It was, yeah. I mean, even now they're they're still dollar bin comics, but I think at some stage they will. You know, they'll have their day. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think you know at the time, like as I said, horror in general back then was even seen as being that great. It was just like everything had gone superheroes and and horror were kind of like oh. I have this box of horror. Nobody cares about it. Here you go. <laughs> it's like it was. That's how it was back. That's back in the nineties, though. I, I think things have changed a lot. Uh, where horror is kind of coming back, yeah. And especially around this time, oh, yes. Halloween, Halloween. I think you know things will come back, and they're doing a bunch of shows about horror. So I think that will re-energize that industry. <laughs> yeah, and it comes every year as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. every year. Okay, have you got some more? Um, I I have. Okay, so I was showing like on my uh, half of the show, um, uh, Warren, uh, you know, comic uh, like magazines, the yeah. magazines. So I figured, hey, I'll show you the dark horse ones. Um, and there's there is a werewolf in here, but most of them are not werewolf. <laughs> so, but uh, but they are great comics, and I kind of strongly recommend these ones. Um, so the first one is creepy. This is the, this is the dark horse ones. Um, oh yes. Okay. And th I thought this was a really great cover. I'm not sure if there's even a werewolf on it. Uh, no werewolves, but just a great cover. Okay. Um, and then there was this one, this number, this is the other variant cover. Were these reprints or were they a new, new stories? I'm not sure. I think a little bit of both. I think a little bit of both. Um, so actually, one of the, the ones, this one I really like. This has uh, Eric Powell, uh, his art. He's the guy that did, he's the creator of Goon. I, I'm a big oh, fan yeah. of Goon. Yeah, yeah. So um, I thought this was a great cover. And one of my favorite covers from Creepy, <laughs> still nothing to do with werewolves, is this one. <laughs> I just, I just love these like um, Nazi kind I of just had to sexy find a Nazi. Way of getting a scantily clad female in your selection. Uh, I have to. That's just a prerequisite for me. Um, and then there is werewolves coming, so don't like I like don't think I'm not being relevant. So uh, this is number four, and then we got a really great creepy cover. Like I like that Uncle Creepy, and this is number five. And we got the killer clown. <laughs> yeah. And then we got uh, number eight. Oh. And number nine. Okay. So wait, where was the stack? <laughs> there was another stack. One sec here. Okay, there's still more. <laughs> and then we got the werewolf. See? I I I, uh, I was building all that way. I was all build up for it was werewolf. All cover. worth it. It's all worth it. This is number eleven, and it's a werewolf. <laughs> so, see, I'm relevant. You know, um, and I actually got a whole bunch more. Um, I want to show one of the kind of. There's a really lot of really great ones. Eerie. There was another series with Eerie that they did, but um, I don't know. So, I, do you want me to just show them all? I'll just quickly show them. Well, I think those are probably we, ghouls, aren't they? Yeah, sort of. Not really. <laughs> and that's another creepy. Number 14. I'm missing like a couple of the issues from the series. Number 16. I think this one's a really great one. Like, you know, you're seeing through the guy's head. <laughs> I think that's a really great cover. Uh, and then we got 18, which is like, you know, has everybody on yeah, the cover? Yeah. Uh, the whole family. The whole family. And then we got then we got the other series, which is eerie. So they kind of, you know, Dark Horse sort of brought all these characters back, right? And these are from 2012. So do you do Dark Horse own the rights to Eerie and Creepy now then? I'm not sure if they still have the rights to it. Um but yeah, a lot of, you know, Warren was huge. Like, I mean, like people don't realize how, how big they were yeah. and how, uh, uh, you know, instrumental they were in terms of like keeping horror alive and a lot of the golden age kind of ideas alive. Um, and, you know, a lot of 
other publishers were trying to bring them back so many times with Bamparellas and like, you know, there was just so many different companies that tried to bring back some of the stuff that Warren was doing. So these are all the uh, eerie ones. And there was only uh, one werewolf out of, out of all of that. Um, but I just thought it was a great collection. I kind of thought is sort of a, the book end to my, what I showed with the magazines. Yeah. So I thought I should show what they're doing with it. I, these eeries and creepies actually would be a good spec. Um, they're ones that I think um, these dark horse ones, these are ones that surprisingly are not as cheap as you might think. You might think of them as dollar bin books. If you can find them in the dollar bin, great. But generally, they're like ten to fifteen dollars hmm, okay. each, so they are actually, you know, a bit pricey for. Uh, that's quite expensive. I was, I was going to say, I was. It might be. I might go and see if I could find a lot of, you know, ten or something. Yeah, you, sometimes you can find them like where people don't realize that they have a bit more value, yeah. and you can buy like a lot. Like I got some of them. Like you know, I get like a lot where it was twenty. You know, yeah, yeah. twenty bucks. Yeah. But um, that's not always the case so they are they do have value so <laughs> so yeah something okay. to look for uh i'm going to do my next uh, one and uh, uh, you know it wouldn't it wouldn't be fair if i didn't show some alan class comics uh, okay yeah we do get quite a lot of ghosts in alan class mm -hmm. uh, this one's really nice uh, cover um it's called so you don't believe in ghosts well gents what do you think now um, and we've got some um, sinister tales, yeah, sinister tales. Um, and this will be a this is a reprint of some American comic, I can't tell you which mm -hmm. one, but it's in nice condition. That one, then we've got this one here, another sinister tales, and um, that story there, the Confederate girl, is a, is a ghost story, um, as is this one here with this ghost rider down here and that's actually quite an early sinister tales that's probably who dates from 1963 and look at the condition of that from a wow second. looks new yeah yeah, yeah. Right. um again um this is from a, another alan class comic called secrets of the unknown and on the cover here now i'll be interested to know if you know where this guy comes from um it's, it's got a character called mr l dead who is obviously comes from some horror anthology comic. Probably, I get, I'm going to guess Charlton. You see him here. Um, and there's a ghost. There's a ghost there as well. Um, I'm not sure. No, I, I'm going to check that up. I, it's obviously from an, an anthology. A what, what's the guy's name? He's called Mr. L. Dead. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm, gonna I'm not sure. Check, I'm going to check it. I yeah, that's something I would... Yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not I'll, sure. I'm probably going to check it up before I edit this. I'll check it up and I'll put it in the. I'll put it in the box above. Cool, cool. Um, Secrets of the unknown. Again, we've got a another nice cover here. Back from the dead. So that'll be Ghoulies. And finally, um, it is a nice cover. Whether this guy is a ghoul or not, I don't know. But he, he looks like one. Um, the Nothing Man. Nice cover. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, Secrets of the Unknown, 158. And we've got the story called Mr. Gregory and the Ghost, which is the second story down here. That's cool. Yeah. So um, those look like um, like uh, reprints of early like Tales of Suspense or like when they were still doing the monster kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you did, exactly. Um, and you get the, the sort of, the, there are a whole range of, um, it's stuff from the, 50s 60s and 60s mainly mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah you know tales that silver age kind of journey in mystery before you know before yeah. it went superhero -y, that type of stuff mm -hmm. and the same thing from archie archie comics and charlton comics and atlas comics and you know um so there's a there's a whole range of them um but uh yeah really nice and you know i i can't i do occasionally when you're going through these Alan class comics you mm -hmm. find something you weren't expecting so I was going through one the other day I put up a video out about it I think do a thing called mm -hmm. comic detective and um I was going through one the other day I just bought this week um mm -hmm. and it's got the first appearance of um of Henry Pym here. the um oh nice yeah yeah and, and 
Yeah, from uh, nice. Tales, Tales of Suspense 27. You're just going through the Alan Class comic and suddenly there's, there's you know, the man in the anthill and it's the first appearance of Henry Pym. Is it is it like how many months after the original? Did right, come? So that one actually um, was, it, the, the copy that I had was in 90, was from about 67, 68 and the, the, the Tales of Suspense 27 came out in like 20, uh, 63 or something. I think, so about, yeah. that, that case it was about five or six years later. Because mm-hmm. actually on the cover of that one is um, Thunder Agents, which is a... Um, uh, the art by Wally Wood, and that had come out mm. in '67, so it had re- reprinted the Thunder Agents very quickly. But the okay. other stories in there was one went back to '59, and the uh, okay, the Henry Pym first appearance was '62, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I knew it was like that '62, '63 era. Yeah, that's when that's when Marvel decided, hey. Superhero seems to work. <laughs> Let's just go with that. So all the titles <laughs> suddenly became superheroes. Superheroes, yeah, it's crazy. Right, I'm so. going to check, test you now, Alan. So I okay, failed. So I me. failed to get Alan's guess who on his channel. Uh, if we're I all think we're these, tied right now, aren't we? We are tied at the moment. So if Alan gets this, he goes ahead again. So and he might know this one. I think he might. Okay. Um, so we have got Doctor Strange number thirty-one. Okay. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that book off the hand. Off okay. hand so so he I... doesn't know it straight away. So I'm going to give you a clue. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a team of... It's baddies. not Defenders. No, 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 no. Uh, they're baddies. Oh, okay. And I'm going to give you another clue. What, it's mm-hmm. also the first appearance of one of... Well, it's the first appearance of all of these guys, I think. Um, but one of them appeared in the Shang-Chi movie. Oh, um, Razor Fist or one of those guys? Um, the Mandarin? No. I'm going to... Uh, no, Mandarin appears way earlier than this. Yeah, no, no, I have the Mandarin's first yeah. appearance. I'm actually kind of looking at it. Um, uh, let me think here. Um, I'm just now like I'm going down the line which which baddies are in uh Shang Chi, right? Yeah. Um uh what's his name? Uh but I think he's earlier. Uh what's the not Fu Manchu, uh <laughs> what's it called? Um uh the abominations in there. Um and what was the other baddie that got killed actually? Not Razor Fist, but there was another baddie that got killed though with the mask. Yeah, there was. I can't, I can't remember the guys. It's not him. Um, and then I'm trying. To, I think that's all the baddies. Uh, then there's, then there's the dragony guy, like the dragon that they fight. What's his? Is name? it that? Yeah, it is that. But what's his name? Um, it, and he made his first appearance in that. Um, he's one of he's, he's one of a group. Uh, he's, well, in, in this comic, he's introduced as one of a group. A group. So the dragon made its first appearance in that well, book. It, 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 it's a, I think the dragon is one of his creatures or a, one of his forms. Oh, okay. Because I was wondering if um, the the dragon, I, I, because they never name the dragon in the movie, do they? I, I'd have to go back and watch it again because when when I found out about this comic, I thought, really, was it was that in the movie? And I, I, I think they, I, you know, this is being recorded as the first appearance. I'm going okay. to tell you. I'm I'm going to tell you because you don't. You're the, okay. Okay. The group is called the Fear Lords. The Fear Lords. I didn't know that. I okay. didn't again. And one of them is called Dweller in the Darkness. Oh shoot! Yeah. Dweller in the Darkness. I have heard of the Dweller in the Darkness. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's the one that they talk about in the movie, actually. Yes. yes. So he he's his first appearance is in here as part of the Fear Lords. There's about four or five of them. Um, so this okay. is a pretty key comic, actually. And I'm sure the other the Fear Lords themselves could appear at some stage. Um, oh, so was the dragon Fing Fang Foom? 
yeah, uh, the dragon is there is a dragon called Fing Fang Foom, but he doesn't appear. But it's not. It's not the dragon. Appear in Shang Chi. It, no, it's that's not the dragon in Shang Chi. I was wondering if they were trying to like you know sometimes they kind of like change the characters and try to make them like they you know. <laughs> so I was I wasn't sure if they were you, trying you, to say they that. They were trying to the... make Fing Fang Foom woke. Perhaps he was going to be bisexual. <laughs> that, I wouldn't doubt it nowadays. Um, <laughs> you know, they have Fing Fang Foom kissing some other uh, boy dragon. Um, yeah, well, you know, exactly. I think yeah, that, I think that would be a good idea to make people make people feel included. Yeah, like, I think dragons have been sort of left out in our society, and I, I think they're <laughs> underrepresented. So, uh, yeah, definitely they need re more representation. So. Okay, I'm not giving you that one. Um, okay, but I didn't know it, so uh, no. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alan, um, great to uh, chat as normal. What are we going to do next week? Because we're running out of monsters, and we've got to um, a week before. So I think, Halloween. isn't next week uh, just before Halloween? Well, it's the 16th today, so a week's time is going to be the 23rd, so it's not really... Okay, so we got one more. Um, what can we do for monster or monsters or Halloweeny kind of things? We're running a bit short. We could so let's let's have a thing. Let's think a bit laterally. Um, or we could do like ages, um, like you know, golden age, silver age, or bronze age monsters and stuff. You know. Like, okay, well, if you do, uh, if you, uh, I'm 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 running a bit short. I'd have to do a few repeats. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Um, like I, something monster or horror. Right. Okay. Related. So, so we're going to do monsters. I can do probably. But does it, it could be monsters or it could be horror? I'm thinking. Like yeah. we could do maybe horror. Yeah. Like, yeah. actually, it might be interesting. Do you have like a lot of Bronze Age holder, horror and uh, Copper Age? I've got a bit. So what if I do gold and silver? Yeah, horror, and yeah. you do bronze and copper. Okay, I'll see what I can dig out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then that that would cover a lot. I don't know much. Oh, yeah, I have a lot of stuff I can show. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm sure you've got can probably look yeah. look at your wall and pick some out. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple <laughs> things back there. Um, so yeah, so um. Okay, we'll try that. Okay, that's, um, that will be, and then we can explain the how the transitions work. You know. Oh yeah, Between that's a good idea. Yeah, we can a little explain. bit of history. Yeah, yeah, I love the history yeah, part. So yeah, 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 that's my thing. Okay, okay. great. So uh, thanks, Alan. And Thank uh, you. enough said. Stop.